Save up to 80% on prescriptions with BuzzRx. As medication costs continue to rise, families are seeking affordable solutions. BuzzRx has partnered with your local pharmacy. Just go to buzzrx.com slash podcast, search for your medication, and instantly access free coupons. BuzzRx has helped people save millions on prescription medications, often offering discounts lower than copays. Plus, it's free to use, no account required. Start saving money today. Visit buzzrx.com slash podcast to save up to 80% with instant discount coupons. That's buzzrx.com slash podcast. Hi, I'm Ashley Flowers, creator and host of the number one true crime podcast, Crime Junkie. Every Monday, me and my best friend Britt break down a new case, but not in the way you've heard before and not the cases you've heard before. You'll hear stories on Crime Junkie that haven't been told anywhere else. I'll tell you what you can do to help victims and their families get justice. Join us for new episodes of Crime Junkie every Monday, already waiting for you by searching for Crime Junkie wherever you listen to podcasts. You may know Jackson Pollock, the painter famous for his iconic drip paintings. But what do you know about his wife, artist Lee Krasner? On Death of an Artist, Krasner and Pollock, the story of the artist who reset the market for American abstract painting, just maybe not the one you're thinking of. Listen to Death of an Artist, Krasner and Pollock on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Get emotional with me, Radhi Devlukia, in my new podcast, A Really Good Cry. We're going to be talking with some of my best friends. I didn't know we were going to go there on this. People that I admire. When we say listen to your body, really tune in exactly. to what's going on. Authors of books that have changed my life. Now you're talking about sympathy, right. which is different than empathy, yeah. right? Never forget, it's okay to cry as long as you make it a really good one. Listen to A Really Good Cry with Radhi Devlukia on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Danny Shapiro, host of the hit podcast, Family Secrets. Imagine this, your parents sign away your childhood to an academic psychological study. And what about if your sister is very publicly tried, convicted, and sent to prison, when really she was just telling her long-buried truce? These tough questions are just a few that we'll be grappling with on our upcoming 10th season of Family Secrets. Listen to season 10 of Family Secrets on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Lucy Jones, a production assistant at Wonder Media Network, and I'm excited to be guest hosting today's episode of Womanica. This Pride Month, we're talking about wordsmiths, women who use language to create community, give a voice to change, and inspire future generations to do the same. From the outside, today's Womanican had it all. She was from a well-to-do family, she was educated, and she married a successful merchant. But she longed for meaningful romantic relationships with women, and she wrote those feelings into her music and poetry. Let's talk about Wu Cao. Wu Cao was born in 1799 in what is now Hangzhou, China. She grew up in a wealthy merchant family, and she and her siblings received a rich literary education. In childhood, Wu Cao also developed an affinity for music, It shines through in her poetry today, which is undeniably lyrical. In her early 20s, Wu Cao wrote her first play, The Fake Image. The manuscript was originally shared with friends and performed for family. Then, it fell into the hands of fellow writers and avid readers. It became a hit. The play was so popular that an actor staged it in Shanghai. When the play was put into print, Another writer inscribed on the title page that those who heard about the fake image vied to make copies of the text by hand. It was so popular that, reportedly, the price of paper suddenly soared. The play itself is emotionally complex. It only has one central character. She delivers all of the dialogue through a single, extended monologue. The action of the play centers on the character painting a portrait of herself dressed in traditional male attire. She sits facing her artwork, contemplating it, drinking wine. The character begins to read aloud Encountering Sorrow, an ancient Chinese poem. The fake image jumps between spoken word and song, and every detail was transgressive for the era. 
When the character sings, she alternates between northern and southern tunes. At the time, northern tunes were seen as more masculine and heroic. Southern tunes were more often used to express femininity. Wu Zhao's play dissected gender through every lens possible. She wrote, I am ashamed of my female dress, and I despise powder and rouge. I dare not call myself an extraordinary beauty, but I secretly congratulate myself for being a sophisticated gentleman. Wu Zhao was decades, if not centuries, before her time. She questioned gender and its role in her life. She mocked the performance of it, and did it in public. Despite the play's popularity, Wu Zhao expressed dissatisfaction with her status in life. She worried about being overlooked, especially as a woman writer. But the fake image resonated with one person in particular who would change those feelings, at least for a while. His name was Chen Wenshu. Chen Wenshu was a patron of the arts. When he read the play, he fell in love with Wu Zhao's work. The two met and she became his devotee, joining his circle of bohemian artists. The circle included women who practiced Buddhism, rode horses, and shot guns. It was one of the high points of Wu Zhao's life. In a diversion from her typical melancholic writing, she remembered her time with this group of women fondly in lyrics. We rode our dappled colts side by side. We women are heroes too. With the support of Chun Wen Shu and her fellow writers, Wu Zhao continued to write poems, songs, and theatrical plays that were sung all over China. She used language typically reserved for male poets and wrote about her love for the women around her. In her poem for the courtesan Qing Lin, she compares a would-be lover to a glowing perfumed lamp and confesses to desiring her body and heart. In scholarly accounts of her life, Wu Zhao has been cast as a devastating figure because of her unhappy marriage and lack of children. But her work challenges more than gender roles and relationship norms. It also presents a more complicated image of a woman. Many of her poems are filled with rich experiences spent with friends and lovers, creating needlework, gambling, making clay dolls, and enjoying life. Throughout Wu Zhao's work, you'll also find the idea of transcendence. Transcendence of gender, of cultural norms, of physical forms. And she often experimented with the Buddhist theory of emptiness as a way to express something beyond her character's physical form. Later in life, Wu Zhao converted to Buddhism. She kept busy with monastic duties and continued to write and nurture other writers until the end of her life. Not much is known about her death, except that she died a Taoist priestess, a role in which she might have helped guide others to a kind of transcendence too. All month, we're talking about wordsmiths. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to co-creators Jenny and Liz Kaplan for having me as a guest host. Talk to you tomorrow. Hi, I'm Ashley Flowers, creator and host of the number one true crime podcast, Crime Junkie. Every Monday, me and my best friend Britt break down a new case, but not in the way you've heard before and not the cases you've heard before. You'll hear stories on Crime Junkie that haven't been told anywhere else. I'll tell you what you can do to help victims and their families get justice. Join us for new episodes of Crime Junkie every Monday, already waiting for you by searching for Crime Junkie wherever you listen to podcasts. Hi, I'm Danny Shapiro, host of the hit podcast, Family Secrets. Imagine this, your parents sign away your childhood to an academic psychological study. And what about... If your sister is very publicly tried, convicted, and sent to prison, when really she was just telling her long-buried truths. These tough questions are just a few that we'll be grappling with on our upcoming 10th season of Family Secrets. Listen to season 10 of Family Secrets on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You may know Jackson Pollock, the painter famous for his iconic drip paintings. But what do you know about his wife, artist Lee Krasner? On Death of an Artist, Krasner and Pollock, the story of the artist who reset the market for American abstract painting, just maybe not the one you're thinking of. 
Listen to Death of an Artist, Krasna and Pollock on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Parents, if you've ever experienced bedtime battles with the kids, I'm going to let you into a little secret. The Koala Moon podcast has revolutionized over 20 million bedtimes, with parents like you calling it life-changing and the perfect nighttime routine. With original kids' bedtime stories and cozy sleep meditations, every episode has been specially designed to make bedtimes a dream. Listen to Koala Moon on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you love comedy movies and Hollywood satire, you're going to want to listen to a brand new podcast called Get It to Dutch. In Get It to Dutch, we play three aspiring screenwriters on a quest to get a script to big-time Hollywood producer Dutch Huxley. Each week on the podcast, we perform a movie script right before your ears. It's like going to a movie with your eyes closed. And we have amazing guest stars, including Tim Robinson, Rob Hubel, Lily Sullivan, Jamie Moyer, and Weird Al Yankovic. Listen to Get It to Dutch, a screenwriter's journey on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.